Hi, welcome to afternoon two of the asynchronous portion of our um, institute. Uh, this exercise is a continuation of the So Much Depends Upon exercise from this morning. And this is a continuation that's uh, something new we've come up with, but it's a way of uh, connecting that early morning exercise to, uh, again, some of the academic uh, types of writing students might uh, run into and encounter and uh, maybe even struggle with. So what I'd like for you to do is uh, go back to the So Much Depends Upon poem you created this morning, and I'd like for you to rewrite it on a clean, on a clean page um, and, uh, go ahead and start it with a, uh, it's going to be a, a multi-sectioned poem by the time we're done. I'd go ahead and like for you to start it with the Roman numeral one and just rewrite it. But I'd like for you to leave out the so much depends upon part. And we may have already mentioned that. Um, but, uh, we're great. That's, that was sort of the jumping off point for us to grab these images and, this has started to become your own creation now. So go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, I'll give you um, uh, uh, a, f a, few, a few minutes to do that. And then I'll read mine. And what's gonna happen here is, because this is a different type of video I'm posting to YouTube, um, you're going to uh, just pause me. And uh, when you're ready, go ahead and unpause me. All right, I'll assume you're, you're ready now. And if you're not, go ahead and pause me again. But um, what you should have down is uh, that poem from this morning, minus the, um, minus the so much depends upon. Little question, how many of you maybe even made a few revisions between uh, the time you transferred it just now to the time it was on the page? That's fine too. Uh, writing is constant revision. So that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read what I have. Mine is so much depends upon my section one. I just kind of give you an idea of what we're working with here. And then we're going to go from there. So what I have is one. Buck Owens on the radio as our tires kick dust on an off-road spitting gravel like the victim's blood in the trunk. This car dances across the plains because we ain't that young anymore. All right. That one got darker than I expected uh, through a couple of rewrites, but uh, there it is. And uh, that is a poem brought on uh, purely, at least image-wise, um, by that exercise this morning. Um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, you've got a list, I've got a list of the songs that we listened to this morning, uh, in order to grab these images. Um, you're supposed to number, um, if, you know, if I can look back in time as I look forward in time from when I'm recording this, um, we were careful attention was paid to making sure that you numbered each segment of your sheet of paper in which you were gathering images on. So you'll have a number that corresponds to both a song and an artist as far as where that image came from. Now, it may be an image, as we've mentioned, you pull directly from the song. Toby did a wonderful job of picking songs that are full of vibrant, um, mostly uh, sensory images. And even when they're not, uh, the phrases are, are still very, very visceral. Um, so he did a great job there. You're gonna have the list of songs with the artist. And I'd what I'd like for you to do is make some notes on the page of your, um, of your, of your poem, 
that now again, I don't know if this one is gonna be backwards or not, um, that correspond with uh, the song. And what I did was I just numbered each song, or, or I numbered each song, and I'm able to go to my, my uh, I was able to go to my, my sheet with all the different uh, many phrases and images I pulled out of it, and I was able to uh, just correspond. So I'll just read what I have for you. Um, the Buck Owens on the radio, I have that just listed as, I put five in a circle, and that corresponds with the John Fogarty song, um, looking, uh, looking Out My Back Door. Um, the tires, the second line, as our tires kick dust off an off-road, that is not a line that was in any song, but it's a, it was, it's a phrase that I, am, I, am, I had an image of uh, during the first song, uh, which was Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a one on that line. You may have multiple um, different songs within a line too, and that's fine as well. But I want you to mark every single one that came, wh where it came from. Um, we're making notes here. Uh, the third line, spitting gravel, like the victim's blood. The spitting gravel really just was a continuation of the road ab above. But the victim's blood, that's from song three, the Bright Eye song, uh, Trees Get Wheeled Away. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a note there that that's three uh, uh, victims in the trunk. In the trunk was added. That's when I added, um, when I sort of, sort of found a narrative here. And I started figuring out this is, uh, this is a couple killers uh, on the run in, in this poem. Uh, this car dancing across the plains. The car is mine, dancing across, uh, dancing across the porch. I believe is the line I actually wrote down in my um, uh, on on the sheet when we're gathering the images. And again, that comes from song one. That comes from Thunder Road. Shocker that I have multiple um, images that come from the Bruce Springsteen song. And then finally, because now we ain't that young anymore. We ain't that young anymore is a phrase, not really an image, but it's a, it is a phrase that you can connect to imagery just because age can be something, damn it, that uh, appears in a, in a visual way and um, sometimes in a, in, a, in a feeling way because you just you feel painful as you get old. But uh, so I've got a one there as well. So I'll hold this up again. Hopefully it, it's showing. Um, but you can see my one, you can see the five there, the one, the three, the one, the one. So here comes the fun part. You're gonna put me on pause for a little while. And when you do, um, if you have questions uh, that I don't answer here, because this is going to be an exercise where you spend a lot of time not listening to me but seeking some things out on your own, um, you uh, you feel, again feel free to call me or text me directly. Uh, this is an exercise that literally was sort of it's brand new. So uh, never have I tested a brand new exercise out this way, um, which is fine. But I, I want to make sure everybody gets all they can out of it, and at the same time. You contacting me with any questions really helps build to the exercise that, that isn't quite, you know, there yet. And uh, that, that's that's part of the process, too. So any questions you might have. And honestly, if you come across something that you did, uh, like an extra, an, an extra step maybe even, you can um, you can tell me. Uh, please send me a text and, and, and we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll add that to, to the exercise. And I will not give you credit at all, I'm just kidding. Because ironically speaking, this is sort of, or this is an exercise that we're, we're connecting to research and the research paper. And in particular, perhaps the annotated bibliography, which is something that's never fun to see on a, on a syllabus. Uh, but uh, when, it's, when it's, I think when it's presented the right way, it, you, students can possibly see that it's something they already do. Um, just the formality of it may, may be something they need a, a little bit of help with. But to show them that they already sort of do this stuff, that sometimes they do to go down the warm wormhole, um, 
of finding out what might be a good source later on. Oh, that's a song I may want to use later, I want to listen to later. That's a type of annotated bibliography. We are going to do sort of an archeological research um, look at the poem you created, uh, which so much depends upon. What that means is once you've taken your notes and you've figured out which songs that have inspired uh, each line of your poem, either with a direct line from the song or simply an image you came up while listening to the song, and then you're gonna do a deep dive into those songs. I ended up with three that I have. I have the um, uh, uh, Looking Out My Back Door by uh, Credence. I have um, Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen. And I have um, Trees Get Wheeled Away by Bright Eyes. So I'm going to get on my phone, I'm gonna get on my computer, and I'm gonna, I've, I've done this already um, uh, to, to show you how the sausage is made but uh, I'm going to do a deep dive into those songs and find out all I can about them. Um, if it works out, then I'm able to find out something about the lyric in particular, even better. If not, that's fine. Find out where the song's coming from. Um, you may not get a, uh, you may not be able to find any sources um, uh, as you research these songs that tell you explicitly what the line you used was about. That doesn't mean you can't find out for yourself where the line's coming from because it's part of a whole and knowing what you can know about that song um, is very important. So, um, what I recommend you do, um, simple, simply, uh, first off, and then we're gonna kinda, I'm gonna have you kinda take some steps and pause me and then unpause me as you need to. And I'm gonna give you, um, kinda help you look ahead as to see what you're going towards. But you are gonna spend some time with this on your own this afternoon. Um, uh, this is a, you know, I think we've got a two hour, or an hour block uh, set up for this. I've been talking for about 15 minutes. I'm still gonna have some, some things to say, but it's gonna give you a good, 35 to 40 minutes uh, to do this. And I think you'll, you'll find it very useful. What you're gonna end up coming up with is a system of notes that you take that are helpful to you, beneficial to you, like an annotated bibliography would be, that lets you know some background information on not just the songs, but maybe even the subjects of the songs that you're looking at. I can't tell you exactly uh, what all you're gonna need just because I don't know what all songs you picked. Some of them may overlap with mine, that may be helpful for you, may not, but I, I did, quite frankly, I didn't, I didn't look up, you know, five out of the eight songs. So, you know, you're, you're, you're exploring new territory here. So, let me give you a for example before you, before you go to pause and uh, start doing some research of your own. First line in my poem was Buck Owens on the radio. Now, uh, I forget the exact line in the uh, in the Creedence song, but Buck Owens is, appears on there. Maybe he's on a on a record player. Um, but Buck Owens was the image, the voice of Buck Owens. So, I uh, I specifically, first off, I started. I looked up Buck Owens. I knew a little bit in the first place. It's one of the reasons the name stood out. But uh, you can see some of my notes here I'm taking here. I got number five, and I found out Buck Owens. Obviously, he's an American musician, and he was uh, he was a forefather of what was or, or godfather father of what was called the Bakersfield, as in Bakersfield, California, the Bakersfield Sound. And I think that's an important um, note to make, an important some, some important uh, part of my research is because. It's his voice on the radio, so it's like a Buck Owens song. So knowing what that type of sound would be is important. Maybe I knew it already, maybe it was sort of embedded in me, but it certainly wasn't something I thought of this deeply. Bakersfield Sound, find out it's sort of a subgenre of country music. It's really the first, and this is, I don't need my notes for this one, but it's, it's the first uh, time that country music um, was influenced by rock and roll. Of course, rock and roll comes about uh, with with the combination of an, an unholy combination of a number 
of different genres, but, but two in, in particular were country music and, and, and blues. And in the case of Bakersfield, Bakersfield then looks back at rock and roll and takes from rock and roll to kind of create its sound. And it was really a, a reaction to this sort of late, um, overwrought, overproduced uh, crap country sound of, of the late 50s. And this was, you know, just sort of uh, grittier, more stripped down. And it ends up, and this is sort of where my research comes back, it ends up inspiring um, sort of honky-tonk country. It also inspires outlaw, outlaw country music, uh, outlaw type of country music was a particular, um, it was even p sort of branded almost by, um, uh, shoot, um, not, not uh, who am I thinking of here? Um, G uh, Billy Joe Schaefer, and, uh, and then it, uh, made famous maybe by Waylon Jennings. So all that, all that, and there's more on the page, comes from that that research from that first line, Buck Owens. So I've 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 dug deep into that. I've got some got the Bakersfield sound, got the led the honky tonk, uh, outlaw country. I dig uh, deeper too into that uh, into that. Um, Creedence song, and there's references to it's again. Toby picked a great one, with that Creedence song, because the images are play. Are, uh, some of the images are very playful. Some of them are as grounded as the Buck Owens line. And then, see, there's a reference to a flying spoon in um, in the, the the look looking out my back door, and uh, just doing some a deep dive, doing some research on that particular song, on the Creedence song that. The Buck Owen lines came from. I find out that there's a lot of talk that it's a it's a drug reference, a reference to um, the heroin spoon. Uh, when when asked about it, uh, Fogarty, John Fogarty, who wrote the song, uh, claimed that the images were nonsensical, and he wrote it for his kid, which seems to be sort of the out for some of these musicians in the '60s writing about psychedelics um, and drugs, <laughs> and um, then question about it. Say, oh, no, no, Lucy and this guy with diamonds, which spells out LSD, is really just something my, my son said. Um, so, I don't know, I was uh, John Lennon talking about Lucy and this guy with diamonds. I, I didn't do the accent. So, that was something I didn't know. So, it's a note I made as well about that song. And right now, I have about a page of notes on one song. That's the direction I want you to go with... Um, with your research. Um, find out as much as you can about um, about where these lines came from uh, in these songs. Again, if they're, they're pulled straight out of there, that's fine. Even if you just had a line that was inspired by the song, find out as much about the song as you can. I'll talk a little bit more about that with Thunder Road. Go ahead and put me on pause though and, uh, and do a little bit of research and then come back to me Maybe after you've done your first, after you've done your first song, all right. Pause. Unpause. Should have my kids in here. I'm in my daughter's room right now. I, yeah, my room is not decorated with dress ups, but um, anyway. Okay. Hope you got. Hope you got some good research. Again, send me some text. I'd like to know what you found out. I hope you find out some stuff that you didn't know. I have a song with the with that first one with Buck Owens. It was some stuff I knew. I mean, I knew the the name and could associate it with a couple of songs I knew off the top of my head, and I was just it felt good that I would be on the radio. But um, it opened up a lot of other doors for me. And of course, the Flying Spoon stuff as well. Um, I see that uh, one pops up a lot for me. Uh, it's Thunder Road. Um, now, this is one of those cases where this is Thunder, Thunder Road, Bruce Springsteen is a song that I teach. I've taught for 10 years. I still went in and did some research. Um, maybe if I didn't find out anything I didn't already know, I found out some things I might have forgotten. Probably not, though. Still did the research, made some notes because it's supposed to be helpful for the next part of our writing because I need these things down. I need to take notes even if I knew it. Thunder Road, we find out, is a, a title. Bruce Springsteen, the song came out in the 70s, 75, but it's a title he stole 
from a 50s movie that he'd never seen. It was about outlaw bootleggers. It had Robert Mitchum. He thought the title sounded very cool. And it does. Um, in particular, the lines that I look at, um, we see um, Mary dancing across the porch. Um, all Bruce Springsteen songs have a particular instance, uh, uh, more more than any other name, the name Mary comes up. Um, it's a name that has, uh, uh, can have multiple meanings there. It's, it's, it's a sister image. It's a, it's a lover image. Obviously, there's the, uh, there's the religious iconography that goes along with Mary there. It's just a name uh, that pops up a lot. I changed Mary in my, in my poem to the car dancing across the plains instead of Mary dancing across the front porch. Uh, you know, in the moment when I wrote that, I'm not sure I meant to do this, but it is interesting to note. Uh, you may something you may find out in research that Bruce Springsteen oftentimes, you know, exchange uh, the, the 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 car often serves as sort of the female form uh, in his song. So the car becomes that there. Um, dancing across the plains. Now this this is one of those weird deals, and I don't know quite how to explain it. And maybe it's it's already it was embedded there, but the um, the plot. If you can call it that for my first part of my poem, the part I wrote for So Much Depends Upon, once it started taking its shape, it, it felt a little like um, the Charles Starkweather story um, from the 50s. And for those of you who don't know, it inspired a movie called Badlands with Martin Sheen and um, Sissy Spacek. And you could, you could look that up if you wanted to as well. It's a, it's a real life uh, story about a uh, older man, not an older man, um, but he picked up a sort of a teenage girl along the way and they, they went on a killing spree. This was turned into a movie, like I said, called Badlands. It was also immortalized in an album, in particular a song by Bruce Springsteen called Nebraska. So a little bit of weirdness there. Maybe it was in the back of my head and I didn't know it. Now, a line I want to point out that I did a little bit more or, or, if you know, are doing research on the song, let me know about the song, was the uh, we ain't that young anymore uh, line. And uh, this is where you find out Thunder Road, um, in a, if you do some research here, uh, it was written in 1975. Uh, Bruce Springsteen was talking collectively as a country, uh, us not being that young anymore. None of the characters were, even if they were young characters, they felt older because the Vietnam War had just ended. So Vietnam uh, is in the, is looming in the shadows of the song Thunder Road. And that's something you wouldn't know by listening to the song just on the surface. That's what research does. So now you're like, okay, now there's this sort of shadow of a war, of something negative sort of hanging on in the background in this song that really feels like it's sort of a carefree song, or not carefree, but like a song about, you know, hitting the road and, get, and getting out of town. So, uh, so that's there as well. Look at three, didn't find as much about three, I didn't know a little bit already, but Bright Eyes, uh, the song Trees Get Wheeled Away, it was a song that, um, I think it's a great song, I'm, I'm not quite sure, I may have had it on a playlist, and maybe that's when Toby heard it, I know Toby, we, all, we, we went and saw, I introduced you to Bright Eyes in a, in a concert in about 2011, but it's a song that, that they recorded between albums, between an album in 2002, late 2002, and then this is from research, uh, and a song that, and an album that came out in 2005, it never made an album until sort of a, a sort of a Lost Tracks album, but it was played quite a bit, and uh, it was played on, on uh, the Letterman show, um, and um, you see, if you look at the lyrics of that song, and again, like, you're not going to find a, a bunch on this, but you can still... Uh, still excavated a little bit, you see a lot of imagery based on sort of uh, play acting or fall, uh, sort of uh, stage being sort of a metaphor here. This was a song written during uh, the buildup and then invasion of uh, Iraq in 2003. And so you can see some of that, uh, that metaphor of sort of building up and um, perhaps even um, exaggerating um, 
plays into uh, in, into that song as well. So that's sort of that's sort of hanging on here. Okay, hopefully you can put me on pause again um, here in a second. Hopefully, what you do is you collect a lot of information like this on these songs that inspired your uh, your poem, uh, even without you knowing it, and these uh, sort of moods that were there without you knowing it. You may find, like me, you had some sort of weird instinct to sort of take it in that direction anyway, and that's cool. Again, this is basically one step away from a formal annotated bibliography. It's taken, it's but it, but it's taken its cue from music. And honestly, Toby and I went to a, 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 a Teach Rocks, a very, very cool um, uh, workshop, it was, it was basically, what, about 10 minutes of workshop and 30 minutes of little Stephen sound check. But th th their website's very good, and, we, and we'll post some links. Um, and this exercise, in part, is inspired by that. But the idea that um, you know, students who may not like to research uh, or may not find a way in, music is a great way because it's something very, very quick and satisfying, two to three minutes, that is full of the past and of multiple sources that support it, if not directly, then indirectly. And those things are very, very easy to find. I believe the example given to us whenever we were at Teach Rocks was um, connecting Kendrick Lamar to the Beach Boys in about one step. So take that Kevin Bacon and your six degrees, um, which is pretty crazy. And it was, it was a very good connection um, as well. And like I said, it's one step away from annotated bibliography. They take notes about it. They enjoy it. It's something they've already connected to if you use this exercise because clearly they like those lines enough to use them in their poem. So they're connected that way. They're going back to doing the research. And then it's a matter of how they put it down on the page uh, for further use. For further use is the key, f key words here though because now once you've gathered this information, what I would like for you to do is write a part two to your poem. And if you'd like to, a part three and a part four. You kind of go, uh, my cat's trying to get in, uh, go as far as you want to with this. There's also another route to take, and that would be once you know more about the poem, you could expand your part one and sort of put, put more lines in between the lines you've already created. I'm not gonna ask that you do that right now just because it's not as sort of easy to manage on the page. But if you wanted to go another route in that way, feel free. I'm just gonna say, my suggestion would be, you've got your part one, create a part two, that's inspired now by the research that you've done in some way. You found out more about this poem, you can create your own images um, uh, now. Uh, we're to that point. Uh, now go in your other way. And I'll go ahead and read what I came up with you for part two, and we don't do prefaces a lot in, um, in writing project, we just try to read what's on the page and let it, let it speak to what's on the page. But I need—I feel like I need to do this just to let you know where some of this came from. You'll see that uh, some of my inspiration came from, you know, the Buck Owens stuff. Um, certainly, that that idea that Thunder Road is a uh, is a is a song that takes place in the aftermath of Vietnam plays a big role. What I decided to do with my part two was to kind of go back in time. And now I'm picturing the uh, the killer, at least one of the killers from that part one, as a veteran um, in in the 70s, and uh, and so he did, I, I picture this is him returning home before the before the killing spree starts. So this is two. I have Waylon Jennings on the fuzzy speakers at the bus station where we get home. A line of unwashed protesters spit vile at our green field jackets. 300 cash in my wallet but a plan in my head, some way to bring back that yellow land that swallowed so many of us to make our spoons fly home. Okay, so the Waylon Jennings on the fuzzy speakers, it's a direct nod to the Buck Owens on the radio. Waylon Jennings obviously being a descendant of that type of music of the Bakersfield sound. So that was sort of an easy connection. Like I said already, the Vietnam angle comes from Thunder Road and then this idea of the flying spoons, um, that was back to the, uh, the, the Fogarty song 
uh, in a reference to heroin and the possibility that perhaps this, this person uh, has set up a, uh, some sort of uh, connection um, uh, that uh, may be able to make him some money now that, now that he's home with uh, some of the, uh, the poppy fields he, he may have been in or, 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 or whatnot, uh, not poppy fields, not poppy, but uh, had, had, the, uh, had the heroin connection over um, overseas. So, you know, just kind of toying with things now, ideas, now, now there's a story, now there's a narrative here. And again, that all comes from exploring and sort of doing an archeological dig of the poem we just wrote, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Uh, hopefully you've paused me on and off so you don't have a huge task ahead of you uh, and you can kind of get to writing. But this is certainly something we're gonna wanna see um, the result of. I, I, I love, not just the, so much depends upon poem, some of you may which have shared this morning. I wanna see so much depends upon upon poem part one, and I want to see part two. I want to see what you came up with after you found out more about your songs. All right, I'll see you later.